Really great opportunity for a ling cod. Wide variety of uh, bottom fish. And do a little bit of crabbing today, but Garibaldi's about north of Tillamook, what, 10 miles, guys, or so? <laughs> Not too far. Just one of those small communities that you happen to zip by when you're cruising on 101. But it's a really neat place. You ever get an opportunity and you know, stop by and take advantage of some of the fishing and crabbing that takes place out of this this port here. It's a great time. Hey, you want to take your rods, buddy? Yeah, please, thank Good you. to see you, man. Good to see you too. Glad awesome. to finally get you on the boat. Oh, yeah. Oh, little rock fishing or sand fishing or both? Of them? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go do some bottom fishing, bud. We're gonna go drop a tap pot and we'll go bottom fish and. Bro, bro said Hyben was running the boat. Yeah, I was gonna just yeah, take it. a nap and drink some beer today, and Hyben okay. was gonna take us to the promised land. Okay. Oh, who makes it? Fishing vessel VIP, radio check on 22 Alpha. Good copy, thank you. So a couple different things we got going on today. We're gonna, like I said, crab and do some bottom fishing. We're gonna come out of the marina. You gotta be careful in this marina, especially in the low tide that we're at now. Got a lot of sandbars. If you look out here, you see all sorts of sandbars sticking out. So make sure to stick to your channel markers there. When we come out of the jetty, we're going to come off the north side there and go drop some crab pots. We're going to let those soak for the day. And then we're going to all run to south-southwest there for about, oh, 20, 30 minutes to get to a couple areas where we have a tendency to find quite a bit of ling cod. So we're going to target our ling cod. If we could get our two ling cod per person, then we're going to switch over and catch bottom fish. We will catch our bottom fish while we're ling cod fishing, but really going to work on getting those couple ling cod per person. Those are the creme de la creme, if you will, of the sea, and so uh, great, great table fare. So I like focusing on those before we go catch our, our bottom fish. Thing. Let's go and drop them. What we're looking for in here is just a smooth, consistent bottom. We found them in here pretty consistently. Go ahead, Jeff, go ahead and toss that one, bud. And uh, we're in 30 feet of water. I don't run a crab davit on my boat. If you can't pull a crab pot out of 30 feet of water, then well, I'm going to question your manhood, but, uh, but, I have a hell of a good time. Okay. but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a straight line and, uh, and just start dropping them. That way when I come pick them up, I know exactly the line I want to run and be able to find them all again. There, so, overnight, so it should be nice and Ready nice. Ready for jumbo on the screen. Just like an eight-incher, buddy. <laughs> I've been gonna water ski. That's what he said. Okay, I'll try that. Oh, I'll this try looks that. like this looks like an outside of Nitar. Yeah. Is that right? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah that's Nitar. That's Cape Cod. Right on. Oh boy. Oh, I see. Doing three at a time. High five tango. High five tango. It's all about safety on this boat. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. We'll give you a couple. Eight Finally got out to our first mark here. What I generally do when I sit down into a certain area is I put the boat in neutral and I see which way it's naturally drifting. And then what I do is I position the boat to be able to cover a large drift and actually make a fish going through there, okay? So right now we're set up just the way we want to be. We're actually drifting to the south, southeast a little bit, which is not too bad. It's a really slow drift, so you don't have to use as much lead. Basic setup here, I'm gonna use one of our dropper leaders here. Okay, this is actually a mighty mini swivel up here. And then these double loop droppers with three tied flies on there bunch of different manufacturers you could get them from you could get them from p-line fishfield has their own line and then we come down to another mighty mini snap swivel there stainless steel and this right here is actually a 20 ounce 
you could use 16 or 20. I bet you today we could get away with 16. The more people you have on your boat, the heavier weight you're gonna want. That way everything drops perfectly vertical and you don't have so many tangles, especially when that drift picks up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on there. I'm gonna put some of our Pro Cure scent on there. We got one of those guys. This right here is a new Pro Cure scent that they're that uh, we're lucky enough to have them make for us. So I can't give you the secret recipe yet, but uh, we're gonna get that thread in there. Boat ready to fish yet? Everybody got something on there, Jack? What do you got, buddy? Okay, you got a, a fishing rod, or are you just gonna put it down there, buddy, with your hand? I'm just gonna drop it. In. You're just gonna put your hand in the water? You said there were that many fish. You're gonna get the top water going, huh? You got one? Because there's gotta be fishing. Okay, get fish. Here we go. Hey, Jeff, or uh, what's your name? Brian, grab the gap. <laughs> oh, come here. We're hooked up. We're smoking. Woo. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to dra drag this. <laughs> I need you to do something about that you fish, what? Jeff. You're kind of milking it a little bit, dude. Well, on camera, they don't even need that. <laughs> sure. We got a fish. We got 80 feet of line out, but we're getting him up. Oh, I got a big ling. Yep, there we go. Big right. ling, guys. Right behind you. Where's that other guy? We're having to let him go. I don't want to fish the bed on that one, didn't I? Hey. Nice job. <laughs> That's the mother of all That's the mother of all in car there, amigo. <laughs> a lot of tacos. A lot of fish tacos right there. Oh, by the way, I'm going to put this on TV right now. You use corn corn tortillas for, for fish tacos. This flour tortilla stuff, I'm putting a squash on it. What's happening is we're starting at one side and we're cruising across the drift here. Now it seems like every time we fish, you gather a few new waypoints and we mark them every time. Every time we get into a heavy concentration of fish, I mark a waypoint on there. And what that does is that just helps me for the next time I'm out here uh, to make a longer drift or pinpoint them when they're when they're being finicky. Hey, that one's got a fish on there. How about that? I've got a fish. If you got, just drop it down, Jeff. Do it your toe. Well, the fish is swimming my jig back up. It's a red snapper. Here's a the descender. I usually just use the same rod and I'll put it right back. This is gonna be a perfect one for that frying deal that we're doing, Jack. Did you try those? Oh, the phenomenal. So this is canary fish, very distinct three marks across the gill plate there. One, two, three. That's the way I identify them. Uh, easiest for me to identify them, just yeah, like that. Lot. Really good, really good eating fish. I'm gonna let this one go, bro. Fish down there. I'm gonna I come forward over. Our new bottom fishing sauce from Procure. Can't tell you the name of it yet because we don't have the name of it yet. So I'm dropping that down and you put the hammer on it. We'll see if that's gonna be the ticket here. 
Those are some good quality fish though. If we could get a pile of those, I wouldn't say no to it. Yeah, I mean, there's some nice, nice. Hey! Yeah, you uh, hey, bro, you want some breakfast? Those are actually really good eating. I, I know. You gotta know how to process it. Oh, I got the lens. <laughs> yes! Yes, man! Okay. No, I... I like that. Or 290 or 290 for two. Definitely got bit. Definitely got bit. Got bit. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been bit on that big jig. Clear. Now this is. You can keep this one, right? Yeah. That's a donkey. That's a donkey of a link hog. So, so Jeff, last time we were out there, well, two times ago that we were out there, we are hammering them on just straight lead and the uh, and the shrimp flies. Yep. And then we go out last time, we could not get a shrimp fly or lead, when I say lead, a bat jig, we can get it bit to save our life. And all we could catch them on is those salt Berkeley saltwater grubs. So this time I'm thinking, well, let's load up on the saltwater grubs and that should be a wham bam thank you man. And we get out there and they'll hardly freaking bite it and Jones is catching them on the flies left to left and right. Yeah. For rockfish, not ling cod, but rockfish, I've never had them shrimp flies not be a good deal. There's been no, I'm telling you, Jack, last time we were out there, those shrimp flies weren't worth the darn. How'd you? No. I mean, it, I don't know what it was. They just wanted nothing to do with them, and that. I, I, the more we do it, the more we figure out the more crap you need. Which again, thank you, Jack, for my nasty habit now of ocean fishing. You but, should look at me as a, a different way. How so? Well, you're going to come up with a way to produce all this stuff, and you're going to actually make money off of it. You know me. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. 